Hey folks, I am Becky with Enduring Finances. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Becky. My dog's name is Jackson. I'm a 30 year old female and uh, this is my budget and net worth and goal update for the month of June of 2023. So glad to have you along for this journey. Uh, first off, let's go ahead and look back on all the goals that I had for the month of June. Now I wanted to continue doing three workouts a week, trying to do three full body workouts. I wanted to save $200 for my trip to Washington. I wanted to go on an overnight trip, not kill my garden, meal prep every week, and then eat between 135 to 140 grams of protein a day. We did really good this month. Uh, the only thing that I did not feel like I accomplished was do three workouts a week. I'm averaging two. That third one is just really hard. So I think I'm gonna, tr I think I'm gonna change things up a little bit as far as what my expectations are and maybe try working out in the morning before working getting up earlier so that is my goal I'm gonna say I did save $200 for my Washington trip because I spent it towards the trip but I technically didn't save it if that makes sense but I was able to spend it on my trip and I have not killed my garden yet it is doing really well I have been able to um, cut off produce I've gotten uh, Four, four zucchinis now. Uh, peas and beans are all good. My little baby cucumbers are coming in. The cabbage is being eaten by something, but it's still growing. Uh, still working on it. So that's how we're doing for my month, my goals last month. Let's go ahead and look at my goals for the month of July. So it's going to be very similar here. Um, I think the only thing that I am going to really change my focus on is breaking even financially this month. I know that I'll go I'll go over this in my budget later on, but the last couple months I've been hit really hard with things on my truck that have, you know, been seven hundred, eight hundred dollars a pop, and that has really impacted uh, my savings and my ability to, you know, spend money the way that I want to spend it. So my goal for July is the bare minimum. I want to break even. I don't want to be negative. If I'm positive, that's great, but I would love to just break even. So we're setting a low bar for the month of July just because it is my birthday month and I am uh, doing my trip to Washington at the very beginning of the month and I'm doing a birthday trip at the very end of the month for myself and I'm going to splurge a little bit because I'm living life and it is summer and I want to do that and I have the ability to do that. I just don't want to go in the red. So breaking even, hitting my workouts, changing it up, trying something new to get that in continue to not kill my garden or my lawn. It is, we're getting into the 90s now and it is gonna get hot and I want to keep my grass alive for Jackson. I'm gonna continue meal prep and eat my protein so that I can hit my fitness and physical body goals. So, those are my goals for the month of July. Um, let's go ahead and jump right into my budget because I know that's exciting. We can see that we have it broken down again with my personal expenses, my mortgage that increased a couple of months ago, paid $1,300, $1,305. My car insurance was $51.60. We did not owe anything for trash. My sewer payment was $72. My internet is split between personal and business expenses. So I paid $9.60 off personal. And then that $50 here during my business expenses. For my water, we were a little bit lower than what I expected, paying $52.89, so a little bit positive on my estimation there. For electrical, also a little bit lower. It's been a, it's been a little bit of a colder, wetter spring, so it's good. So I paid $71.57 there, and then we get into the bulk of my spending, and we have this broken down here. So groceries are going to be a little bit weird here. So. We went on five different trips to the grocery store. It's a longer month as far as weekdays. And I ended up spending way more than I wanted to, coming in at $450.37. And part of that is because I found a fantastic deal on chicken wings. They were how five and a half pound packages, about $26 right now. And I found three of them for $5.95. And so I snagged up all three of them and spent a little bit more money than I would on some groceries depending on if they were good and just building up and trying to buy the, the deals that I can. Plus buying for camping trips spent up a little bit more there. So that's our total there. 
As far as eating out, I did have some barbecue fun and then did some social events, uh, bringing that total to $31.45. And the barbecue fun was with my family. We did an end of school year uh, cookout for the kids and had s'mores and did all the things. And so that went to that. As far as gas, we are saying I spent $99.44 off of personal expenses and then $93.56 off of business. And that is just tracking all of my uh, gas expenditure and all of the individual mileage and gas, gas mileage rate uh, <laughs> for my uh, additional income sources. As far as health and maintenance, we spent a lot of money. Uh, $200 counseling, $79.59 doing an oil change on my truck. I had to get new tires as well. This was something I've been dreading, but I needed to do it. So I ended up paying $845.41 on four new tires for my truck. They are fantastic. I needed them for my trip to Washington. And then I spent $22.83 on vitamins and meds, bringing my total health and maintenance to $1,147.83. And I'm crying inside right now. As far as fun and other... I didn't really have enough space down here and I just kept it organized. So we had six months of Jackson's medicine for $185.91 and that's a triple preventative thing for him to be outdoors. And then I had to update my car registration for $172.73 and that's for two years plus my Idaho Parks Pass so I can go out of the state parks. And then another big spend we did was I bought a portable AC unit for $200 because as we all know, my AC died last year and it's gonna be hot and I need something here to not only keep myself cool, but my dog cool. And so we are gonna limp through this year. I was going to save and put in a new AC unit, but there's complications with that because my truck broke down and then need new tires and now here we are. So we're cutting corners and getting a $200 one instead. I had to buy new jeans because I heard holes in them. <laughs> Those thunder thighs rub together and then they just, it's just not good. So I spent $26.48 on new jeans. And then with all of the truck problems that I had, I had to use the bus, take a lift, and use scooters to get around for $20.12, just based off of time. And then of course, Jackson's dog food came in at $32.32, bringing the fun and mostly other stuff to a negative $637.56. And then we get into birthdays and holidays. And I had spent $25 on a birthday gift for someone. Snuck it in there real good. $15.03 on other, other, other things. And then $171.51 on trips. And this is mostly getting camping sites uh, reserved for different things for my trip to Washington and then my birthday trip as well. And just some of the things that I can prepay above for that. Bringing that total $211.54. And we can see that this wraps up my personal expenses as one of the most expensive months that I have ever had, coming in at $4,149.34. Ouch. So almost $1,000 more than what I was planning for. And uh, ooh, whew, yeah. So let's go ahead and take a look at my business expenses. So again, we have that $50 internet already taken out split between personal and business. For Enduring Finances, we didn't have any expenses. For Holy Smokes Photography, we can jump over and see. I spent $4.40 on Etsy fees, and then $16.36 on Etsy marketing for a loss of $20.76. And then as far as that additional income, yeah, that number's wrong. As far as that additional income, we saw a loss of $93.56 on gas. I, yeah whatever you guys understand what i'm trying to say math is hard but yeah 93 dollars and 56 cents for a loss of you know about 155 dollars plus about 10 so 165 dollars there numbers are hard let's go ahead and take a look at my income so we did see that 508 dollars for my va benefit I made $1,845.74 for my part-time job, making dough. Uh, we made $1.56 off of Enduring Finances, that's website ads, and I changed up the style on that a little bit because I realized that it was an overbearing amount of ads showing up on the website itself. So we're probably going to see this number trickle down a little bit, um, just trying to make it easier for people to read that. 
And then as far as Holy Smith Photography, I made $2.92 off of passive residual income from stock photography. And then we get into the bulk of my additional income and that is my side hustles. So we made $380 off of dog sitting. And this is outside of any app or uh, service. This is just me sitting dogs that I've worked out originally with their owners. Um, had a lot of fun with that. I donated plasma and made $440. I didn't do any DoorDash and I didn't do any Uber Eats this month. I did, however, earn $268 doing Lime Scooters. Kind of jumped into that again and got my feet wet. And then I made $568 off of Rover. And a lot of this is carryover from right at the very end of the month and Memorial Day weekend moving into the beginning of June. Um, but I was, was spent a lot of time with dogs this month, uh, bringing my additional income total to $1,656 even, meaning that I made between everything $4,114.27, but that still was not enough to cover all of my expenses, as we can see from my total income breakdown, that my expenses between my personal and my business came out to $4,305.17, and I was $290.90 short for a loss of about $300 there. You can see how it impacts personal versus income and expenses of business versus income from my business. You do get what I'm saying. Now, let's go ahead and jump over to my investing returns. And this is just a generic breakdown, nothing too in depth here. I made $2.76 $2 off my high yield savings account. I earned $71.89 off of stock dividends from my dividend portfolio. As far as Lending Club, my peer-to-peer -peer lending group, I made $5.43 off principal and $0.77 cents off of interest, and I paid $6.06 6 in fees for a gain of $6.14 overall from that. My 403B retirement account had a gain of market gain of $1,485.46 with zero fees, and then my thrift savings plan, also a retirement plan, made a gain of $426.71, bringing my total investing return to a positive $1,992.96 and six cents in fees. So not too shabby there, we're doing pretty good. As far as how this impacts my sinking funds, uh, we can take a look-see and just see that we've spent you know $58.62 on birthdays. We're halfway through the year, so we are doing really good. Um, the summer and early fall is going to be a big, heavy birthday for family and whatnot. Trips, we spent a total of $278.08 on trips. We're estimating $400 overall. We can nix the AC unit because we spent $200 on something, and we will continue this later on. When we get through the month of July, we'll reevaluate. We haven't spent anything on Christmas yet. <laughs> We've spent $610 on Jackson, and we should not have a big spend on him until December when we buy another six months of medicine and his vet visit. So we'll, we'll probably be over that $800 estimation. And then my emergency fund, we are still sitting at that $2,000 with $10,000 left to save. But that is how my singing ones are going. Let's go ahead and jump over to my net worth because we had a major major update to this that I'm, I don't know how I feel about it, but we'll see. Let's get to it. We'll just jump right into it. The biggest change that we had was the market value, the estimated market value of my home, the price that they think someone would pay for my home. And I got a notice of assessment right here from uh, the 80 County Assessor, because I live in Boise, telling me that my property value had been reduced from $367,800 to $308,800. So we lost about $60,000 in value of my house. This means that my taxes should go down a little bit this year, which is good, but it has quite drastically impacted my net worth. Um, but yeah, let's see how it let's let, let's see how it plays out. So we have three hundred and fifty dollars cash on hand, two hundred dollars in my checking account, fifty dollars in my savings account, two thousand dollars still sitting in that emergency fund, getting real close on these numbers here. And I don't like it, but we're gonna we're gonna work on it. Not this month, but next. Sixty-seven dollars in my lending club, seeing that really drop down. 
$30,660 in my stock portfolio, $29,959 in my 403B retirement account, $14,272 in my TSP retirement account, and personal property, the vehicle is still valued at $6,200, $600 in furniture, $1,300 in gym equipment, and then $7,500 in others, bringing my total assets between my house and all my stuff to $401,958. $402,000 essentially. We'll just, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. And then the only liability that I have is my mortgage, which has dropped down now to $188,168. That's it. And we can really see here how the decrease in the market value of my home has impacted it because we jumped down to a positive net worth of $213,790 for a decrease in almost 20 and a half percent, uh, 20.62 percent decrease in my net worth overall from the month of May where we were just sitting under $270,000. So we're still above that $200,000 mark. Uh, would love to see that jump back up. Uh, but it's going to take a while as we continue to increase our investments and decrease our liabilities. So increase assets, decrease liabilities. That's how you, you mess with your net worth. And uh, yeah, I think that's going to wrap things up for me today, guys. Uh, next week, I'll be breaking down all the dividends that I earned from my portfolio. And I uh, hope you get something from that. So I will see you next time. Bye.